Oh, new notification. Oh, that's pretty cool. Do you think we can add something like this to our report? Well, let's have a look. Welcome to How to Power BI. My name is Bas, and if this is the very first time for you visiting this channel, then make sure to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date on all of my videos in which I share everything I know about Power BI. You know how you have these little notification bells always at the top of your screen when you log into an application? Well, I wanted to replicate something similar, but then for Power BI, because it's a super convenient way of communicating the key messages that you wanna share with your report readers. Whether that is a key insight that you found, or maybe you have seen something in the report that other people need to dig into a little bit deeper, well, you can put that into that notification bell alert that you're gonna put on your report. And I want it to look like this over here. So something that doesn't take a lot of space, but if somebody's interested, they can go there, see that there are two new messages, hover over it, and then it shows the last messages and highlights the newer ones at the top. All right, now let's replicate this step by step. So I'm going to add it to this report over here. And as the first step, well, we need that little icon there at the top. All right, now let's start there. Now, where do you find icons like this? Well, one place where you can find them is in PowerPoint, right? So we can open PowerPoint, then go here to insert, and here we have icons. And then let's say you want to have a bell, so look for a bell, and there you go. We have all different kinds of options for different types of bells. Maybe that one over there, then click on it, insert. And now we can simply save the picture and use it in Power BI. However, watch out. If you have a light background, this is fine. Or if I have a dark background, so I want the lines to be in white. So select the image, graphics, and then over here we can go to graphics fill, white, all right. Now, doesn't show here because, well, we have a white background. However, now I can save it. And here it wants to save it as SVG, which means we can make it as big as we like it to be, which is probably a good idea. However, you can then only use it as the background of a card visual, and then use that instead of the traditional image uh, object. And I want to keep it simple, so I just go for PNG. It's gonna be a small picture anyways. And then I'm gonna call this one notification bell. Now, if you want to have maybe a different icon, well, you can also go to websites like flat like flaticon.com and then over here, look for a bell. And you see, you also have tons of different examples to choose from. Now, then you can go back to Power BI, insert, and then image. And then simply select the notification bell image and place it where you want it to be. Now, the next thing that I want to create is that tooltip that you see over here, where we have all of these notifications, these messages. Now, where do we read the messages from? Well, this could be from an Excel uh, workbook that you put on OneDrive, but it doesn't really matter. We just need an input table somewhere. Now, to keep it easy, I created already an Excel file. And you see, I just have a simple table with the notification number, the message, and the date that it was added. That's it. Now that Excel table, we can just load directly into our data model. So let's do that quickly. So home, Excel workbook, notifications. And I'm just gonna connect to that table that has all of these messages and load it to the data model. Now there it is, notifications one. Let's get rid of the one, all right? And I leave it as a disconnected table in my data model, all right? So if I switch over here to the modeling view, you see it's disconnected, all right? Now, the next thing is that we need to build that tooltip, that custom tooltip. So that means we need to insert a new page. This is going to be my notification tooltip. All right. And then we just have to give it a size. So let's go here to format your report page, page information, allow users tooltip, and then canvas settings. There we can change the size to custom. And here we can put in the height and the width. Let's go here for 250 as a height, and here for the width, we can go for 450. All right, now the size, of course, depends a little bit on how many messages you wanna show at one point in time. Now this gives us enough space for at least five messages. Now the next thing that I wanna do is give it a background. So let's go again to the formatting options, canvas background, and here I want to have an image, and I have that shape over there that I wanna use. All right, and then put the transparency to zero, and then the fit to fit, maybe like this. And if you don't like the rounded corners, then you can also just go for normal. All right, now that gives us a nice gradient background. And then on top of that, we want to build a table. All right, a table. So I go over here to the visualizations panel, choose here table, and let's make it a little bit bigger. 
let's put it over here. And then from the notifications table, I would like to have, first of all, the message, all right? Then I want to have the notification number that we can put here, maybe in front of it, all right? And then maybe also the date, let's put that one in between. I don't need the whole hierarchy, let's keep it simple, just the date, all right? Now, over here, we have now the notification, date, and message. Now, it doesn't really fit nicely. Um, so let's go here to formatting options. And under style presets, I go for none. And then I would like to decrease the size of my values a little bit. So let's go for the smallest possible, maybe eight or nine, just like this. And let's change the font type to, let's go for something different like dim light. All right, now that looks interesting. Now here, we have to create a little bit more padding, get rid of the total rows, so let's do that. So let's first get rid of the total rows. So totals, turn off, we don't need that. Then here we want to have a little bit more space, so let's go to grid. Now here we have uh, options. There you see we have row padding, that's what I need. So uh, let's put it to three. Okay, so that we have a bit more space. And then here I want it that it wraps the text so that it goes on to the next line. So if we make this column just a little bit smaller, you see, it breaks, breaks the line and continues on the next line. All right, so that starts to look a little bit better. Now, here the headers, I actually don't want to show. Uh, so it's kind of nice that it lets us sort it in at the most recent at the top. So in descending order, however, I don't want to show the headers themselves. All right, now what we can do is make, first of all, the header font size a little bit smaller. All right, so here, column headers, and let's make this as small as possible, okay? However, then it still shows the headers themselves, so let's get rid of that. Just go over here and put in a space, all right? So the headers themselves, you cannot turn off. However, you can make it invisible. And if we now go here to formatting, general, then here under effects, we can turn the background off, all right? So uh, you don't really see the header anymore. Now, instead of that, I'm going to have a manual background shape. So here, shape, and then round the rectangle. Of course, you could also make this part of the background uh, if you don't want to work with too many shapes because every shape needs to load. And then for this shape, I want to have a different style, a different color, and maybe here also at the angle, let's make it a little bit less. And then we have to just push it to the background. All right, so here in the format, or I'm using the selection pane, and we can send it backwards. Now let's take a few more seconds to clean everything up. For example, that borderline that we have there at the top of the table underneath the headers. Well, that is a grid, options, and no border. And then from here, we want to have column header, and then bottom, turn it off. A little bit hidden, right? Not so easy to find that one. And then the next thing that I want to do is make it maybe a little bit less high. We don't need that much space. So over here in the formatting, I go to canvas settings and then put the height to maybe 250 is enough. All right, looks a little bit better. And then we position everything. So that's nicely aligned in the middle. Okay, so I repositioned everything just a bit. Maybe nice to also show that bell icon here on the left hand side, just as a finishing touch. So insert. And then we have here image. Let's put the bell icon there on the left as well. Okay, and that is kind of the starting point for this notification tooltip. All right, so now let's go back then to the report page and add it here as a tooltip to that image. Now, you cannot just go to the image and then over here add a tooltip. Doesn't work. Yeah, you have that tooltip over there. However, there we cannot have a custom report page. So as a workaround, what we can do is just take a card visual, put that card visual on top, of our bell icon, make it a little bit bigger, all right? And then here we need something on it. So for example, we can just take the notification number, put it on there, okay? And then we're going to make everything invisible, right? So here, format your visual, turn category label off, and then here under general, we want to have no background, so background off. Now for the value itself that shows on the card to hide that one, uh, what you could do is make it invisible. So and now at the moment it doesn't show because the font size is too big. Either you leave it like that, it's also fine. Uh, but if it bothers you that there is still that uh, value showing, then go to new measure and then just create a transparency measure. Call this one transparency. So, uh, all right. And then we can do RGBA. 
and then bracket open zero 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 and then zero for opacity so that's fully transparent okay then we can just apply conditional formatting to the color there for the color value all right so let's go for format style field value and then here i have it in the folder other transparent and I click ok perfect just make sure that it nicely overlaps that icon okay now that is step one then you need to take the card visual again and then to the card visual, we're going to have the tooltip, which is the report page with the notification. So that when we hover over it, you see, it shows the tooltip. Okay, but now you might say, but what if I have 20, 30 messages? That's not gonna fit. Yeah, that's, that's true. It's not gonna fit. And if there would be a scroll bar, we couldn't use it because we cannot really hover over the tooltip itself and then interact with the tooltip. So that's a little bit annoying, but what we can do is limit the number of messages because only the most recent ones will be relevant, right? So here we can decide on a number, let's say five. So if we then go to the notification tooltip, now here we can just use a top end filter on the table visual that takes the top end of the field notification number, right? So that we take the top five, for example. So let's take this one, notification number, add it to the filters on this visual, all right? And here we can use a top and filter so i want to have the last five and then here by value that's going to be the notification number and apply all right so you see now we just have the top five unless you have a message that is really really long okay then it would still go over otherwise it would always fit okay so just take kind of a size and top and number that almost always will work now that starts to look like a nice notification tooltip However, what is still missing is on the bell itself, I want to have there a little circle that shows me how many new messages uh, are there, all right? Now, the first thing that I actually wanted to build is that it shows me the number of new messages for a specific person. Well, that's kind of gonna be very tricky, right? Because you have to know for each person what messages have they seen. And also, if you have one report that multiple people are looking at, well, that's going to be very tricky. So instead of that, I thought, okay, we can also just say, okay, when a message was added in the last three days, that's a new message, right? And then I want it to be highlighted here in the counter as a new message and also in the tooltip itself that we highlight the rows. Now let's first add over here a counter, all right? Now we can do this with a shape, huh? so insert shape, and then let's go for an oval, so a circle, and I'm gonna put it there at the top of this bell. So now we need to write a measure that counts the number of new messages. So number of messages that were added somewhere in the last three days. So let's add that measure. Let's first create it. So over here, new measure. And let's call this measure number of new notifications. And then here we can use a calculate. So calculate. And then we want to have the count. So count of, and then the notifications number. All right, so here, number of notifications. All right, however, we don't want to count all of them. We want to have the following filter condition where we say, okay, the date inside of that notification table, so this one, needs to be bigger than, well, today minus three. And so whatever cutoff point you want to take. Let's add it as text to that shape. Okay, so style, then we go to text, and over here we have the conditional formatting button field value and then we can go here to the notifications table where I added it and oh it's grayed out I cannot choose it okay hmm. annoying let's go back well what is the problem here well it, everything is working fine however we need to have this as text output all right so what we can do is we can just wrap this inside of a format function so something like this let me say format and then put this like this Okay, this is one option, or maybe if you find it easier, we can also have it like this, that we just say uh, ampersand sign, and then combine it with an empty text string, which makes the whole thing show as text. You see here, format text, okay? So then we can go back over here to conditional formatting. Now we should be able to choose it. So there you go, number of new notifications. And now you see there two. All right, so we have two new messages. Let's first check if that is actually true. So here in the data table, now you see we have today the sixth. And so this, these two, so the 4th of September 22, 
uh, these are counted. Okay, so these will show until we reach the eight, right? So, and then it doesn't count those anymore. Okay, now I also want to highlight them. Now to do that, we have to go back to the notification tooltip. Okay, and now we just need to have another measure and that measure will have the same condition and then uh, uh, return a certain color when the message is in the last three days. Okay, so let's write this measure. Let's add another one. And let's call this one notification highlight. All right, highlight. Okay, now here we want to check if, and then we have that same condition as before. And so the date in the notification table, I cannot refer to it like this. I need to use selected value. So if there's only one value, and then we want to check the notification date, okay, then it returns the notification date, and it needs to be bigger than today, so today minus three. If this is the case, then we want to return the color, and here, let's go for some light gray color, so 240, 243, 247, and then close your brackets, and over here, this is just RGB. I don't need the transparency there. All right. And then close that function. Now this we can use for conditional formatting because now here for the table, I can select it. Now let's go now to the formatting options and apply conditional formatting to the cell elements. And we want to have a background color, conditional formatting, choose over here, field value, and then notifications, notification highlights, the measure that we just wrote. You see, only the first two are there in gray. I also want to have it for the other columns, so let's just repeat this process for the other columns as well. Now, over here, this is grayed out. Okay, now we have, all right, now we have over here background color as well. Let's turn it on and repeat the process two more times. Okay, so now let's test it again. Let's hover over the bell notification icon. I see that there are two new messages, meaning a message that has been added in the last three days. I look at it see what the key takeaways are. And in uh, two days, I think these new ones disappear again. And maybe new ones get added, highlighted, and like this, the circle continues. Now that's it. This is how you can build a notification bell at the top of your report page if you want to share more information without it having to take a lot of space on your report page. Now, I hope that you like this idea. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. And if you want to check out more videos about different design elements that you can add to your report, then check out these videos over here. I want to thank you for watching and I hope to see you in the next video. Shh.